third floor? Okay. Good afternoon. I just kind of want to start on time, even if I'm not ready, and probably neither are you. So um, welcome to our afternoon joint meeting with the Manatee County Commission, and I certainly welcome all of you for a joint discussion. Um, I think if, if we could just have your board members introduce themselves just for our TV viewing audience in case they're not used to you. Um, we'll start there. If you'll push your little button down there. That little button. Thank you. Ed Hunzecker, County Administrator for Manatee County. Thank you for the invitation. Hi, Betsy Banak, one of the two at-large commissioners from Manatee County. Steve Johnson, I'm a commissioner for District 3 in Manatee County, which is West Manatee County. Okay. Vanessa Ball, Manatee County Commissioner, District 5, which is out east. Great. Yes, I'm Steve DeMarsh, Sarasota County Attorney. Vicki Palmer, Sarasota, Manatee County Attorney. <laughs> <laughs> I do not aspire to your position, Steve. <laughs> Good afternoon, Paul Caragiulo, District 2 Commissioner from Sarasota County. Charles Smith, District 2 Manatee County Commissioner. Charles Hines, Sarasota County Commission. Robin DeSabatino, Manatee County Commission, District 4, which is South County. I'm Nancy Dietert, uh, Chair of the count Sarasota County Commission. I'm District 3, which is our South County. <laughs> Priscilla Trace, District 1, Manatee County. Mike Moran, Sarasota County Commission. Carol Whitmore, Manatee County at large, which is the entire county. Alan Mayo, Sarasota County Commissioner. Okay. Jonathan Lewis, Sarasota County Administrator. And they are checking on a technical di difficulty. Madam Chair, if you could just give us a minute, because they may want us to pause. Okay, so we're going to just be in a, a, a present um, state of aging in place. <laughs> Uh, feel free to have some coffee, water, whatever we need to do to get settled. Madam and while Chair, they're five minutes. Five minutes. And um, Jonathan, then how do you want to handle the discussion? Uh, the way we have, uh, uh, Mr. Sandrock and I have arranged these is uh, our, our county will present an item, they'll present an item. So when it gets to that item, uh, we'll call up the appropriate staff to, to handle the item. Okay, that sounds great. So we will be in recess for a few minutes.
Jonathan Lewis, our county administrator. Thank you very much. Uh, by way of introduction, Rob Lewis uh, is our current interim director of our transit department. And uh, when he came on, it was right about the time the, the board had decided uh, it would be a good idea for us to go out for an RFI request for information on issues relating to how could we do things differently, better options that others might give us on our transit uh, system. And uh, Rob's going to just provide a, a brief update today on where we're at in that process. Okay, great. Good afternoon, Chair and Commissioners, Administrators. For the record, my name is Rob Lewis, Director of Intergovernmental Relations. In the context of today's meeting, as Mr. Lewis said, uh, Interim Director of SCAT. If I could go to the first slide, I think Lee has left me here. I'll begin. To give you context, uh, as Mr. Lewis indicated earlier, the RFI effort traces its way back to last summer, the end of last summer, where the Commission asked for a solicitation format for the consideration of alternative methods of providing services. Subsequent to that, uh, I came on board as the interim. We prepared and recommended the board adopted or approved an approach that's called a request for information. We put that out on the street in January. The responses were due on February 21st, which we received three. I believe they're in your packet. And during the month of March and April, which we're currently in, we've been reviewing those RFIs. Uh, we've also, and I think this is an important context, we've also been reviewing, and notwithstanding RFI, um, alternative methods of service delivery. And that's very important from the context of providing the best in the service that we can. We've made considerable effort to continue to outreach to other local governments, uh, the first of which has been a, always been a very strong partnership with Manatee County staff. Uh, we've had uh, a meeting with them, and we will continue to meet with them to review not just the RFI, but to review what we're looking at as alternative methods of delivering service. Um, as you know, Route 99, which is interlaced with Sarasota County, is a significant route to the community and to both counties. Uh, the latest numbers I had earlier today, an average month of ridership for Sarasota County is somewhere in the neighborhood of 23,000 riders. So it's significant. We've also reached out to the town of Longboat Key, and I won't enumerate all the other entities here, but I will also add, because it's in process now, uh, I've reached out to the Chambers of Commerce within Sarasota County, Visit Sarasota, Sarasota Manatee Airport Authority, and we're also going to at some point uh, have an engagement with the USF Center for Urban Transportation Research. Again, just briefly in context, why we provided a recommendation for an RFI, we felt that it would provide us a tool to conduct, as Jonathan said earlier, a little bit of early market research. It also helped us, will help us define scope if we go to any further steps. It also affords potential vendors the opportunity to provide input and it can reveal possible solutions or associated benefits and challenges. I felt it was important to learn a little bit more about what we didn't know before we move forward with anything uh, other than an RFI. And just to uh, summa sum summarize for you, the responses are not offers. This isn't an, a solicitation in the sense that we've received proposals. I provided this to the Sarasota County Commission when I spoke to them last month, but I think it's worth repeating for the context of the discussion. There are a number of solicitation types. The RFI is one of those. We could go off the slides. I don't really need those at that point. So we released a request for information, as I mentioned, in January. We requested very generally uh, a description of how current transit-based mobility services could be provided to Sarasota County. We asked for any suggestions or advice regarding programming or implementation and management. And we asked for any detailed information or clarifications that would be needed in order to prepare a conference or proposal in the future. We received three responses to the RFI from three firms. One of them is a firm called Keolis. A second one is a firm called uh, RapDev, which we believe is primarily a European-based company. And the third we received information from was a company called TransDev. Going back to the first response, Keolis uh, recommended that uh, Sarasota County, if they do proceed with that, that we do so with a contract that would report to the county uh, administrator or his or her designee that if we sought proposals that we give 60 days for that and that uh, 
those contracted services would include operations and maintenance, paratransit, technology, vehicle maintenance, payroll, FTA reporting, grants, and a number of other things. But in their suggestions, they said the county would still be responsible for policy direction, obviously by the Board of County Commissioners. Ownership of the vehicles and infrastructure, which is important from a federal grant standpoint, uh, the capital financing, the local financing, po uh, policies related to fare, uh, the fares that uh, people pay, and fleet replacement. They did have a couple good suggestions in terms of if we went to a request for proposals or some other solicitation that we uh, put an emphasis on proposers listing all the technology that would be used for delivering those services. And I think as we all know, technology has changed the way we operate and provide public service and it changes the way in which we go about our, our personal life as well. And I know the board in previous conversations has uh, talked about the consideration of different types of technology or different types of delivery that we've not perhaps considered in the past. The second company that uh, recommended or that responded to our request for information was TransDev. Uh, they proposed that we consider, if we were to seek proposals, three different kinds of models. One of them is what's called the management model, where they would come in and just provide the day-to-day -day management, but they would not provide for the staff or the operation of the service. The other one is something called the turnkey model, which is very similar to that, but the third one, which was probably the most uh, interesting from my perspective that we hadn't spent a lot of time looking at yet is something they refer to as a public-private operating partnership. And if I could, there's a page or an outtake of a page that was in your packet. So this is not new information, but it's an enlargement um, that I'm going to ask Lee to put up on the screen because I think it's a pretty good visual that captures the difference between a public agency providing the service and a private entity providing the service. This is in the context of the TransDev response, so I want to make sure we frame it in that fashion. But as you can see, there are extremes at both ends and everything in between. And that's the process we're in now, irrespective of a contractor or a vendor. We're looking at how we provide those services, what means by which we provide them, and then we will come back through our county administration uh, with a recommendation as to what steps we take next. Thank you, Lee. And then as I said, the third company that responded was a company called uh, RapDev. Uh, again, they were uh, a little light on their suggestions, uh, but it wasn't an indication of their ability or, or their competencies. It just didn't provide us too much more in the way of information if we were to consider what type of uh, proposal we would go for next. The, the, all of the firms that responded with information were pretty standard in suggesting that you provide anywhere from 60 to 90 days to respond to a proposal if we sought one. And all of the firms uh, seem to indicate that the startup time was anywhere from three to four or five months once uh, you were in a relationship with a vendor to provide services. So with that, Chair, I will stop and entertain any questions. Uh, again, we are a work in progress with this. We have a number of things that we're working on at the same time. They're all complementary to each other. And we uh, will continue to partner very strongly as we have so far with all of the entities, but most especially today, Manatee County staff. Okay, thank you. Um, we will turn to Commissioner Banak for question. Um, just uh, one question, and looking very briefly at um, the response from TransDev, I, I noticed they talk about the PPOP model in conjunction with Manatee County. Was regionalism at all part of the um, uh, part of the RFI? Was there any request to look at possibilities of expansion of service beyond Sarasota County and operation at a regional um, basis? Chair, if I might respond. Please uh, do. Commissioner, uh, we were very purpose in wording our request for information in a very general sense, and so the quick answer is none of the responses or information preclude any particular approach, regional or otherwise. Okay. But that, it looks like that, and I have not read the other ones, so it's just looking through it real quickly, that perhaps they were the only one that might have been aware of the possibility of uh, regionalism there. Are they the only one that did mention that? Chair for Mike. Uh, yes, Commissioner, they uh, were the only ones that mentioned Manatee County or any other entity for that matter. Okay. Um, anybody else? Commissioner Karajulu. So, um, yeah. 
who would respond to this, but what potentially, you know, let me just follow up kind of where Commissioner Benek was, was um, a point she was making, but w what would it, uh, what would a process potentially look like if Manatee County, for example, wanted to do exactly that, look into that regionalization? How would that, from a procedure standpoint, we, we have our RFI and it's sort of in, in, a, in its own bubble right now, if you will. But one of the things that was attractive uh, at the beginning of this is, is the regional idea because our economic units, our uh, entire existence is so connected to Manatee County, um, not to mention we have specific and logistic transportation corridors that cross over these two, these two units. Um, what, what would it look like from a process standpoint? Would it, would it, it's not like you'd have to, because Rob, you just indicated that there's nothing that was precluding a regional apparatus, but would, would we have to stop and then restart? And uh, if, for example, Manatee County wanted to, wanted to participate or wanted to be included in, in some analysis or? If I might, I, uh, I think there's any number of ways to proceed. Um, as you described, you could stop and we could start, or we could have a discussion about uh, jointly proceeding with something on a regional basis. Uh, a fellow like me that's been around a while, we've tried that on a couple of occasions, but <laughs> trying to look at a regional approach to improving transit service for the customers of the transit system is an interesting approach. Um, we could look independently of Sarasota County as a, um, an, a like type request for information, or there's an approach of just setting out to the public, to the private sector. We have two counties that would like to be more efficient and more effective. Is there a way that you could make that happen? And then wait for a response. If there's a way to make it more efficient and more effective, tell us how you would do that and tell us how you would save money. Given that the two transit systems are not identical in the way of service miles and service hours, it would require an accounting exercise to figure out if there is savings, where does it come from? So who would benefit? And that, that would be part of the exploratory process of um, if there's savings on one side or the other, how do, the, how do you account for that? Short of having it, as I've heard over the years, I think we, that's when that Jim Layfellow was around, uh, creating an independent authority to run the two transit systems. And uh, each county lower their millage rate to the amount they're currently spending. And you let the new authority th that you would go to the legislature with increase the millage rate to the same amount the two counties lowered so that the net to the taxpayer was zero. Uh, is another approach of getting it. Um, so there, there's multiple ways to get at it, whether it's an independent or the two counties just stick with a, I think what the TransDev proposal is, um, a public-private partnership where we would continue, each county would continue to own the assets. And each county would be responsible for approving changes to service delivery. But short of that, is there some way that we could save money by doing it together? I don't know until we ask the private sector. Um, Madam Chair, if I may just follow up. Um, yeah, certainly. The um, it's 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 wonderful to to uh, uh, see the possibility of saving money. That's probably what's driving this. But um, no pun intended. The 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 part that that is interesting to me is. I, at least from from Sarasota County, from from speaking as one one commissioner from Sarasota County, is you know, we're subsidizing a public transportation system in a huge amount, which is no surprise. Uh, most I'm under the impression most public transportation uh, agencies or services are heavily subsidized, um, and saving money is a, a, a great thing. But but for me, I, mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't be um, I don't mind the subsidy if the service is better. So. Saving money is great, but for me, I, I, I'm looking more towards the technology, looking 
more towards that that way. If, if savings can be realized, fantastic. But but I don't know that that's for me the single reason. I think that there, there there's going to be some savings for sure. If you look at some of these other places that have have uh, uh, have private management, um, you know, and and, and they, it, it comes with issues. You have service issues like you. Yep, I, I know for myself, I probably get an email every day about something to do with SCAT that has, uh, um, you know, a particular user of the system is, is not happy about it. But, um, you know, I go back to this point where our, our, our economic models are just so closely aligned and so, and have, have been uh, dependent on each other for years and years and years. And it just seems just very reasonable and, and very logical that we could do something together to really provide a, a transportation product that that is you know a 21st 21st century product um, that's that's it thank you madam chair as you pointed out the uh, the mission going in up front to soliciting the input from the private sector is to determine is our objective to save money or is it to make the money we're spending now more efficient and effective and maybe you could save some money and expand service sure. and keep it at the same dollar amount sure. um, so you need to clearly articulate. Earlier in my career, I was a chief financial officer for a transit authority that covered seven counties and two states. And it can get quite interesting when you move from county to county as what their objectives are. Um, but it can be done. And they have tools. Um, and speaking to a group a couple of weeks ago, I said it's uh, one thing we do in government is we do what we did last year very well. <laughs> Mm. Innovative and creative isn't usually our long suit. <laughs> oh boy, Anna, can I, I'm gonna, you will hear that, that very phrase again, I promise. Yeah. Okay, um, Commissioner Baugh. Money, oh, sorry, as well. Ours are always on, so I don't think about it. I'm sorry. So, you know, it seems to me that we're all around the table. So we should make some decisions and move forward for a change. <clears throat> Instead of sitting back, and, and I love, I haven't had a chance to read these, these bids yet, but at the same time, um, obviously the two counties could get together, make for better service, probably uh, cheaper money, um, which is great for everybody involved. And I think for this, these two boards at this point, I would probably say, let's get off our butts and do something instead of just always talking about it. Let's do something and move forward. Because if we don't, it's a waste of time. Well, then maybe we can have, <laughs> maybe we could have a goal for the day since I understand what you're saying, meeting after meeting on the same topic, nothing happened. Uh, maybe we could, by the end of today, have like 10 things we, that are must-haves for both our communities. I have a problem being a conjoined twin with anyone. I've had partners before. It doesn't always work out. We have a current situation now that isn't, you know, working out all that well. Uh, and we're tying the hands of future boards. We might all love each other and get along, and after the next election, the next group of people doesn't get along at all. And the other thing that I'd like administrators to factor into our future thinking and conclusion drawing, when you're talking about the private sector, you know, they've got to figure out how to make money. We're dreaming if we think we're going to get better service for less money. We can say that's our goal. We can use that our, as our excuse after it fails, that we were just trying to save money, but you're not going to get better service for less money. So the private sector, to make money, they're going to put us both together 
and then their business model is to use us as their shining example and add more counties to the line, uh, pretty soon you got a whole train and you hope your train with all the passengers are all pleasant people who love to get along with each other. So those, those are kind of my fears that we're, we might all be on the same page this week, this year, this group, but next year is a different year and different group and how's that gonna work out for us? So that, I'm just throwing that out there. Now I'm gonna turn to Mr. Moran and then um, Commissioner Whitmore. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, adding a little detail to this that's important to me anyways, I, I'm by far a study of it, but I think I've done some homework on it. I know this is an issue in Sarasota County. I'm assuming it's for Manatee County and others municipalities throughout the nation is that there's this deep discussion about the first mile, last mile mm -hmm. on these bus systems. And it's the people getting from their residence the, to the bus stop, and they call it, let's say, a mile on average, get off the bus wherever they're going and then the mile at the end. And um, this is where the pain points are on this stuff. So I, I realize the money is a huge issue and it's a massive subsidized line item for us and I'm assuming Manatee County as well. Money is incredibly important on this. There's no question we can try and find savings. But again, I think the private sector is gonna be the answer for us on that first mile, last mile. They have the technology, no disrespect to anybody in the government world, but the technology is out there of coordinating this with the Ubers and lifts and ride sharing and making sure that we're ahead of that. I'm just nervous, um, as Commissioner Baugh mentioned, is that we'll be at the iPhone 47 <laughs> before we're coming back together to have a fruitful conversation on this. If I could snap my fingers with all of us being in the room together, I would like these, these applicants that brought the RFI to be bringing presentations before us and for us to have good healthy debate on it and whether we think it's truly can be executed in our region or not. Um, and Rob, I ask that of you is in this RFI process, I, I looked on the staff report, so you're, you're going to be coming to us with next steps. I'm hopeful including a timeline of, um, I don't want to live in our own isolated world in this in Sarasota County. I think it's incredibly important to have our regional partners in this conversation. How, what would that look like? Chair, if I might. Uh, yes, Commissioner, we we'll definitely come forward when we bring a recommendation through the administration with a timeline. And that's why in that first slide, I thought it was very important for you to see the time that has elapsed in a much quicker period uh, over the last couple months as we released the RFI. We got it back, we evaluated it, we said we would come back in April. Um, I would certainly expect that we'll have more information through the administration when we meet again in May. And then the board has meetings again in June. We haven't agended that as part of that yet, but from a timing standpoint, I certainly would want to have a recommendation in front of my county administrator uh, sometime within the next four weeks at the worst. And, and if I might, Chair, if I might just add to that, complementary to that, we've got a number of other efforts and looks, and your point about the last mile, the first mile, last mile, very pertinent. We've looked at that and are looking at that as we've met with the city of Sarasota, as we've met with Longboat Key, um, we've talked with uh, the MPO. There's a, a possible opportunity for us to be partnering with them through some of their planning this summer as well. So again, as I mentioned earlier, notwithstanding the RFI and notwithstanding the budget conversations, at least in my interim, I feel it's very important to expedite the review of alternatives. Well, I've got Commissioner, what, let me answer my previous dissertation was really buried in a question. If we join two counties, do we have to add more counties? Can, what power do we have over a private enterprise to say they can't add more counties to the train? That it would, their agreement would just be with the two of us? Chair, if I might, uh, any solicitation has to be well defined in the scope of what you're asking. So, so if it were a more than an egg? not particularly a chicken and an egg, we just it would need the solicitation would need to be very prescriptive in terms of what we wanted responded to. Okay, so as we continue our conversation today, if we could like throw a few bones to staff in the way of <laughs> something to hunt for, what are our preferences, Commissioner Whitmore? Well. I think what we need to do is, first we all have to decide if we want to get married. Right. 
and we want to do this. Uh, we, we've and already we want to have children. Exactly, <laughs> little chiclet, chiclets. Uh, we have, I think we have made some progress. I mean, I know it's been a year, but you guys have gone out and done more research because uh, from what I understand, you guys were taking the lead on this and you gave us something. But what we need to do now, decide if we regionally want to do this, Ed brought up the idea, you know, we spend nine million a year towards transit and our recoup is maybe 18% if that. I'm sure you spend a lot more and yours is even less. So, uh, so we have to decide if we want to do that. That could be a way that our taxpayers could maybe swallow funding something to go into the private sector. Uh, that's something we all can discuss. But what we need to do as boards is go back to our individual boards and decide if we do want to get married. And if we do, then we need to start the process and doing our and working together and having public hearings and going from there. Because this is, and then we may be here, unfortunately, in seven or eight months, but we do need to start somewhere. We all asked our staff to do this. Sarasota took the lead, uh, which we had asked, I remember from last year. Uh, got those bids, so we kind of look what's going on. But now we need to decide if we move forward with it together. And Commissioner, you're right, if you want to include other counties to make this even more regional, or do you want to start here as an example and then have others follow in the future? That's something else. Yeah, thank you. Um, we're going to do Commissioner Mayo and then Commissioner Banak. Well, I don't know who's ready for marriage, but uh, perhaps we can, we, we can talk serious dating. Commissioner Banak and I, for I think the last three and a half years have represented our counties on the Public Transportation Task Force meeting which precedes the MPO. And I've watched MCAT staff for three and a half years, six meetings a year, and SCAT, and they each play off each other and take ideas from each other. Uh, quite frankly, I said this before, if you told me we were gonna consider Uber or on-call bus service three years ago, I would have asked you if you hit your head and didn't get medical help, but not anymore. Uh, maybe the dating is that we, we cross county lines now. We touch on a longboat, and we also touch on a long length of university, and our buses cross that jurisdictional boundary. Maybe the place to ask our staffs to start is there, is there any economies of scale by having those one service or the other go deeper into the respective counties? And I would at least propose that. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Banak. Thank you. How this did come about, um, Carol's right. You know, at one time we were going to look at a possible merge system, and then that we decided not to do that. You all went out and did your privatization of your um, your uh, paratransit. paratransit, and then you decided to look at what are the opportunities, and that's why you did this, as I understand it, the opportunities for privatization. Not really privatization, but looking at improvements and what a private sector might bring. It wasn't to look at regionalism, Carol. So that, that idea did not go forward with Sarasota County. They did not take the lead. There's been nothing in regionalism in this analysis. However, I, I think um, <laughs> we're talking about how things can become so old so quickly. I sit on T-BARTA. T-BARTA's big effort right now is a transit, um, a regional transit agency. There is a bus rapid transit proposal. I think you probably, if you listen to NPR at all, you've heard about it um, kind of a lot that it's going forward between Hillsborough and Pinellas County, and it is not a merger of their transit systems in any way, shape, or form. It is going to be a private service that is going to run a BRT if the funding comes through. So I want to be careful not to, you know, we got to think about what's going to happen in the future, and we have to look at that. So I think we do need more analysis um, before we could ever get married. <laughs> Um, but I don't think we've done that yet, and we need to decide if we want to look at that. I think that's got to be the decision that our boards have to make. Do we want to look into that and look at what the possibilities are? Then we're probably going to have to ask for more information. Maybe. You're talking about total privatization? No, the opportunities. Just like, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you all have talked to Ed Tranchick about this. If you haven't, well, aren't you fortunate? He, I've talked to him many times <laughs> about this, um, you know, what his 
what his ideas are, and it isn't, it's more this um, PPOP model that he's talked about. And it isn't, um, you know, there are ways to do this, but if we're gonna talk regional, I think the question is different than the question you had answered, but I'm not sure I haven't read all your information. But I, I really think we've gotta decide if we want to at least pursue that, because we're gonna have to get a lot more information. Well, see, the, the one of the people I did speak with, um, their whole business model is dependent upon being regional. And finally, the guy admitted, yes, we would have to cut services to save you money. <laughs> so then what's the point of that? And I'm tied in from here to Tampa. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I did not care for that model. Yeah, if I could just respond, the other one I heard was kind of the opposite. They said we would have to expand services in order to make it work, to be able to have this kind of an operation. The only way that would work is if there was an expansion of services is what I was told. So. Well, it, okay. they need, it's the definition of expansion that bothered me. Well. Mr. Lewis? Yeah, so. Jumping uh, up uh, over there? Well, yeah, well, I, I didn't realize that this broader regional concept was even potentially out there. Apparently, I had some kind of Freudian slip on it because I referred to my partner over here by the Charlotte County Administrator's name at the beginning of the meeting. So, um, uh, but w one of the conversations we had as the county was discussed, if you remember back in August when this first came up, uh, we had this conversation about when would, if Manatee would be interested in, in engaging in this, one of the conversations we had was, let Sarasota County, because we had made the decision to go ahead through the RFI. Only after that will our board decide if we're going to the next step in the process on procurement. And then we could have a conversation, which he could then have with his board about, hey, do we want to join in on that? And if we do, what would that look like? Because as he, as he says, you don't have to get married to go through the procurement, you know, go through that solicitation process. So that's one option. Of course, the other option that's been discussed in the past is not, not really two entities anymore. It's just one entity. That, those are also options as well. If I may. Okay. I, I would like to um, just jump in and say that Rob Lewis, who is our county lobbyist, does a yeoman's job following state government, and I worked with him for years, has also had to fill this hole in our transportation department and, and has really done a bang up job because I've never seen so much stuff come out of that department, and it's, and it's very solid, good information. So while he's new at his job, I think he's done a, a good job. Uh, Commissioner well, Carazulo. You know, it's incredible. I, 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 on my way to nearly eight years in um, my political life, and I never thought I got to the point where I'd say something like, nobody's going to change the definition of marriage to me, which is what I'm thinking right now. It, 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 here, here's just a, a couple things. I'm not anywhere near as familiar with um, Manatee County's public transportation system, um, but we have an awful lot of assets riding around that don't have anybody on them. And what's great about a private sector model, yeah, they might produce some services that aren't working functionally, but one of the good things is that it's fully incentivized. They need to get people to ride the bus. They need to do exactly what we have been um, not very successful at doing for whatever reason. And as far as the marriage component of this, well, and I don't know who, for example, provides your uh, your your county issued phones or mobile, let's, just, let's assume it's, it's Verizon. I don't know who it is for us, but let's assume it's, it, they're both AT&T or they're both Verizon. I don't feel like we're married because we're using the same service provider. Now, granted, it's an oversimplification of what we're talking about here, but it's this type of sort of parochial, that's mine and this is yours kind of stuff that is exactly what compels government to not act when things are happening in an environment. Public transportation is, is more attached to technology than lots of other things. And you don't have, it's not water, it's not sewer. You don't, the lost time is the lost time. The innovations are coming out so quickly. And those who are in the business of earning based on the success of their business model cannot afford to be behind. And is it something that would require an enormous amount of forensic examination and review? Of course, that goes without saying, it's a huge service. But 
I think there's an opportunity here. If you, if you look forward at, at what population numbers are going to be, um, looking down the road, which I, I cringe to think of right now, it's going to be more important than ever to make sure that that apparatus is, is, is in place and that that efficiencies are in place and that an incentivization to use a service is in place. And I'm not going to be here to have this discussion again, I don't, I don't believe, but I, I urge you to really, really look closely at this. This is an opportunity that I think is, is pretty, pretty magnificent. Thank you. Another thing we can look at, from, certainly from our county, I don't know about yours, is we, we put money in to try to make it more convenient for people to take public transportation. I mean, part of the thing is you have to wait in the hot sun to even get a bus, and, it, and if it's not coming every as often as a subway, you're not going to bother taking it sitting out there. So we did, you know, some covered um, spots, and I, I just like to re have some refresher numbers on whether ridership is up or down. So then we, I mean, it, I'm with Commissioner Mayo. I mean, it, it started out as a joke, and now it's not a joke. It's reality that it's cheaper to send an Uber to some lady's house to take her to the doctor than it is to sign her up, and more convenient. That is one instance where it's faster, cheaper, better. It's better service for the customer. They don't have to sign up a week in advance and spend four hours to go to a half an hour meeting. So those are things that we could probably look at. Did we have Commissioner Moran? Yeah, can we drive this home for a minute? So there are people, these are global entities that that's all they do for a living is transportation. That's all their function is in life is to move people around. Uh, is, again, for a timeline here is when are we, are we going to have someone standing before this body or the joint body giving us details and a sales pitch on on what the opportunities are for us to again critique evidence testimony debate questions when do you see when somebody will be standing in front of these two boards or or ours alone chair if i might respond commissioner backing up in the sequence of things if if we were directed by the board to seek a solicitation for for a request for proposals, and you recall I, in your packet as well, there's a number of different approaches. It usually is for this type of service in the confines of an RFP. The three responses we've got from the request for information indicated that you should allow for 60 days for respondents to reply to that. And then subsequent to that minimum, probably 60 day, uh, the staff would need, I would think, another 30 or 60 days at the most to analyze that, to evaluate it, rank it, so to speak, and bring it back through the county administration. That takes us to, in a best case scenario, sometime during the fall, if that direction were given and if we followed that general timeline. Madam Chair, if I could just one more minute on that. So we went through the effort of the RFI to gain information to do a proper RFP or whatever going forward. So what I'm hearing you is that it would impair the procurement process for even in this RFI process for people to come give us a presentation. Chair, if I might, uh, I would defer perhaps to the county attorneys on that, but we are always sensitive to the procurement process and not wanting to do anything that would in any fashion cloud that. Having said that, we have requested information, but I will, I will defer to the attorney as to whether or not and how that would happen without an act of solicitation and responses. Mr. DeMars, do you have an answer? Uh, I have a short answer. No, I, I cannot give you a complete answer on that because we'd like to look at some alternatives. We, there are going to be some limitations, but I, I really can't tell you how we'd resolve that. Okay. Commissioner Priscilla, why is not Trace? Did I say that wrong? No, but that's all right. Well, as a person that's been married 38 years, the single life's looking pretty good to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, we have so many assets we've already paid. It, I would have to see a lot of figures and be talking to a lot of people before I start turning the assets that the taxpayers of Manatee County have paid. I have no problem working with Sarasota County. 
but seems to me in privatization, they're about making money, which I have absolutely no problem with them doing it. But that means that, the, no offense, I live out there in the, you know, I got lost here in town, got sick on them roundabouts, because I live out east. And we're able to take care of our people because we know our people. Well, the guy that's in, and I understand what you're saying, they're in the transportation business, they're in the transportation business to make money. We're in the county business to take care of our taxpayers. Two different things. So we have to know what we want to do, what our objective is, and how we're going to go about it. We just built a whole new fleet business uh, building. It's beautiful. I'd have, you know, I'd hate to have to be turning around and giving it to someone, and 20 years later they say, well, we couldn't make money here in Mantee County, and it comes, you know, comes back to us. So I'd have to see a whole lot of figures and a whole lot of things before um, I'm even dating. I, I would agree with you, uh, Commissioner Baugh. Yes. I don't. Okay. It, it seems to me <clears throat> that I feel like it's deja vu. Uh, last year, year before, and the year before that, and the year before that. So it seems to me this was the first thing on our agenda for our joint meeting. It seems like uh, I don't know why it's there. So uh, I guess what I'm going to have to say, and, and Commissioner Caragiulo, I wish you were still going to be here, uh, but I know you're not, and because uh, I do agree with a lot of what you've said, and Commissioner Mayo and Commissioner uh, Moran. Um, but it seems to me that you what we have with here. Anything I said. <laughs> oh, you named Madam four Chair, out of four. five people. <laughs> <clears throat> well, just for the record, she did, didn't tell me she's sad that I'm not going to be here in November. Just levity. I think I told you that yesterday. Yes, she in did. The meeting. She said she's glad November's yeah. coming. Okay. No, I didn't. Um, <laughs> golly day. At any rate, I think we're we're wasting our time here talking about transit. I don't think either uh, county at this point, from what I'm hearing from all the commissioners. How about that? I don't think we're all on the same page. I think we need to go back and into our prospective counties and have this discussion so that hopefully next year, and I will still be here, um, we can move forward. And <clears throat> maybe if we decide to try and, and uh, you know, look at this from the two county perspective, at that point maybe we can have uh, some companies here to give us information to, to uh, you know, go from just dating to maybe being engaged. Because right now we're, we, we seem to be um, just, you know, staying in the same position every year. So guys, I, I mean, I, I, I understand uh, where the different commissioners on both sides are coming from. Um, you know, I mean, I've, I've heard this many times. I know most of us have. So for heaven's sakes, let's make the decision of either looking to join the two counties as much as possible to make better service for our citizens or just take it off the agenda and not talk about it anymore for a while because it, it's not helping any well, of us. Don't you agree uh, we'd, we'd have to do, we're not going to be doing that today. Right. Because to exactly. Ms. Commissioner Moran's point, um, we have to see what it is we're voting on. And what are we choosing instead of what we have? Madam Chair, I think my point is, is that once we all get to this meeting, right then both counties should know that we're ready to play ball or we not. We should just have a plan ready to exactly. make a decision. Exactly. If we're going to bring it forward. De Sabatini, and then your administrator would like to you say. want to go first, Ed? So I'll defer to you first. Thank you. At the risk of repeating history, um, in this room, six, seven years ago, we, the two boards, collectively agreed that we were going to explore this business. And the motion was uh, that the two county administrators would get together and craft a request for proposal that would come back to each board for their review prior to going out for the solicitation. And it was determined at that point in time by the two administrators that Sarasota County would do the procurement for this radio system that's on the agenda today, oh, and that Manatee County would prepare the RFP for this look at transit. And the look didn't even talk about a marriage. It didn't even talk about an engagement. All it said was, let's go do one procurement, ask the private sector if there's a better way to do what we're doing. And then to your point, Commissioner, 
those folks would come in here and make presentations and each board could see the benefit and the shortcomings and the economics of moving forward. And if you didn't like any of the proposals, we just go back to doing what we're doing and we didn't even talk about an engagement. It's just going out and asking, is there a better way to do what we're doing and ask one time instead of two times. And that went forward and eventually died. We never went anywhere with it, but that concept is still out there. Do one procurement and see if there's a better way to do what we're doing. Commissioner De Sabatini and then Commissioner Johnson. Um, I really appreciate you putting the meeting together. It's always nice coming down here and uh, your beautiful facilities and you know just looking because as you said boards change and administrators change and things change. Um, so I came with the um, mindset of hearing what what you all have to say. Um, and maybe if we can explore other areas that are like similar demographics, um, what they're doing, you know, since reinventing a wheel, if, if someone has already done it. Um, and you went into the privatization of your, our counterpart of the handy bus, correct? Mm -hmm. How is, I just want to know how's that working out? That's been successful. It has been. It's been saving you money and better service. Right. Chair, from a respond, uh, the ADA transportation, which is administered through a paratransit contract, the, the numbers are about the same as last year. I don't think I can quote the exact dollar amount today, but I believe it's successful. It's leveled off in terms of its demand for service. I think part of that has happened as a result of other options, other technology. Um, but becoming and staying the community transportation coordinator, the CTC, which in part administers part of that paratransit operation, um, is, is never necessarily a break-even venture at all. Um, it's a transportation of the disadvantaged is a, a very specialized effort. And hearkening back actually 40 years ago when I was in between graduate and, and undergrad school, I was a, a, a paratransit operator for the Senior Friendship Center. <laughs> which was the previous CTC before the county became the so, CTC. So would you say that it was worth going to privatize or you had just as much success being in-house? I'd want, Mitch, Chair, if I might, I'd want to ask the staff for an analysis in several parts from a customer service standpoint, from a budgetary and cost standpoint. and. Um, and from a general management and maintenance standpoint. So I'm not all prepared to give you that a summary. No. Yeah. Right. I'm sorry. We're politicians. We all yeah. think that's a no. So, yeah. so I'm just saying. Like yes. I'm just saying if. And not your fault. If but. you privatized it, and that's a smaller part of the equation, say. then was that worth doing? Yes. Um, okay. And uh, so this would be on a larger scale. Would it be worth doing to privatize it versus having it in-house? Because I know, um, speaking with our administrator from time to time, when uh, back in the day when we were a lot poorer, that we would have to consolidate and maybe um, outsource things. You weren't as happy outsourcing because you didn't have as much control as you did with your own staff and your own hiring. So that's always a trade-off. So. Um, and then also, has any other region explored smaller vehicles, not just the right. big buses? Because if they're not full and you can have two smaller ones that go to two different areas, maybe that's a way to go in the future. Just throwing it out there. Madam Chair, not to prolong my answer too much, but yes, we are looking at different sized vehicles. And that probably should have been a done a long time ago I, I always kid that all of our bus windows are tinted so you can't, can't see, see that there's, there's nobody, nobody on in there. there right what's the point and, and you're spending why a lot of we gas were buying and buses that tear. large is beyond me yeah. I, I would defy both counties to name one bus that's packed with people in either county Oh, well, it's free. yeah, tour. 500,000, yeah. Well, our, our Siesta Key trolley does very well, too. Yeah. Let me tell you. Right. But that's, that's yeah. different. I right. know. Um, we had Commissioner Johnson, please. 
Yeah, um, thank you. Um, I get, you know, I'm, I'm the new kid on the block here, and, you know, um, I figure we've just killed an hour. We've got three more things, so we might be ordering right. pizza um, at the rate we're going here. Um, <laughs> um, you know, but, you know, I came here with the, the expectations of really exchanging what you all are doing in certain areas and what we're doing, so we can kind of have an idea of where Sarasota County is doing. Um, I got the impression from Rob, you know, he was giving us a quick overview of the thing. We suddenly quickly got into the weeds and, and started asking a lot of questions, and, you know, I think it's given me a lot of food for thought. But, you know, to me, I think, to, you know, so that we can maybe keep moving this on, I think in talking to the Manatee County staff people are here that they plan on just giving kind of an update. And if you all have questions, at least you'll have some idea where we're at in our processes on different things. And likewise, I'd like to hear, you know, the points from your staff. And I don't think we're here to negotiate a deal to get married, to get a one night stand or whatever. You know, we just want to keep, Ooh, I like to you get know. more interesting. <laughs> Well, we could work something out, Nancy. <laughs> this has turned out to be a happy day after all. <laughs> but um, so I'm just suggesting that you know that we try to stay on focus, and, and I, you know, and that just you know, it's up to everyone else. But I just thought I'd throw that out there as something uh, I think that in order so we, we can move this along. Yeah. Uh, we've all compared this to a marriage so many times, and I'm poor sorry, Commissioner Ba has been an elected official for a long time, been to too many of these meetings. I, I now conclude that probably all of us have spent more time on discussing busing than the thought given to who we married in, in real life. Because <laughs> it didn't go on for years and years. Same conversation. Um, speaking with your chair, I, I hope you will all agree that we set this aside momentarily, ask our staff, your st staff and our staff separately and then together separately to come up with the best plan. You're the experts. If you think there should be changes made, offer some options to us and then we'll decide if we want to do that as a joint venture or not. But let's let our transportation experts work on that, offer each side, you know, our proposals, and then put that aside and move on. Because we do have things that we can decide on, and there's no sense in continuing a public tire kicking session. So I would suggest that we move on to items um, B, C, and D. Uh, Mr. Lewis. How do you want to proceed? Uh, the sh shelter memos, uh, the whole shelter discussion. Sherlyn, our uh, chief of emergency management is here, and we can talk about uh, what's happening in the shelter business. So, where, oh, there she is. Sherlyn Burris, chief of uh, emergency operations. Take, Take it away, Sherlyn. Um, so, a little bit of a fortuitous uh, typo. I'm going to be talking about a little more than just sheltering. Sheltering doesn't happen in a vacuum, so we kind of have to take it as a whole piece. So I've got some uh, brief introductory slides, I believe. And I don't have any of my counterpart from Sarasota, but this is just our storm surge inundation map. It's the water being pushed on shore by the strength of the storm. Uh, this is salt water, not fresh water. And this is the main reason why we evacuate in Florida. The Further inland, uh, you'll see the colors. It corresponds to a number of feet. This is height above the dirt, more or less, so however many feet above the ground that you're standing on. Not sea level, it's not height above sea level. Um, so we have a very similar storm surge inundation map between us and Sarasota, and our similar uh, neighbors down south as well. So this changes every couple of years. We get better data. Um, land shifts naturally, water shifts naturally. And we uh, update these maps and put these out to the public. So last year we had a very large update. Uh, if you knew anything about Manatee County's map, you'll notice, especially around our West Bradenton areas, um, those, that storm surge inundation is being pushed further and further inland. Um, it's not good or bad. It's not 
one way or the other. And of course, we don't really argue about why. We're just here to maybe fix the problem moving forward. Uh, the same for Sarasota and our northern counties as well. So what I wanted to talk to you guys about today as we move into hurricane season this year, and uh, the new thing, of course, is hurricanes. And I don't think we ever had one up until now because everybody is very interested uh, in hurricanes since we had Hurricane Irma. And it's been very interesting to see uh, our local interest. After Hurricane Hermine, we didn't see the massive influx of attention to Hurricane Matthew that we saw last year after Hurricane Harvey and then Hurricane Irma. So a lot of uh, people's behavior and the interest is really spawned by what we see on TV. So people saw what happened in Texas and they made some different decisions than they would have normally made in Florida um, just based on those images that they saw. It was either out of um, they were not educated or aware of what was going on or they didn't understand the science or they were just new to Florida and didn't really understand uh, the big differences between freshwater flooding from rain in Texas, which honestly, I don't know if anybody from Texas is here, but they have some of the worst building codes in the nation for hurricanes. Florida very recently announced we are the number one state in the country for building codes against hurricanes. So our structures are built stronger, and a lot of that was from Hurricane Andrew in the early 90s. And every time we have a storm in Florida, we strengthen those building codes because we understand that that's the number one way, the easiest way, that we can help people be safe from storms. So watching Hurricane Harvey on TV uh, was a very interesting, um, uh, more or less like a little prod to get our people to very, be very interested in hurricanes and evacuating, but maybe a little too interested. And so I'm here to help just guide some education on what sheltering is, why we do it, how we coordinate it across the state, how Florida does uh, evacuations uh, and some different things. So um, in Florida, we evacuate for storm surge. So unless you're in a mobile home, which is unsafe at any wind speed, um, we only evacuate based on that height of water above the dirt. So that's about a good estimate from the National Hurricane Center of how much salt water is gonna be pushed inland. So we have to get people out of harm's way, out of that salt water. Uh, and we do that by just evacuating them to safer areas of the county. We call that evacuating tens of miles, not hundreds of miles. If you watched TV in September, you know, and some of our, our folks in the room did, evacuate much, much further than tens of miles. Uh, I have a slide right near the end, and I'll show you. Hurricane evacuations are very complicated. Um, we only evacuate if we're going to be able to save more lives than we would risk. Um, they are risky to implement an evacuation because we're putting a lot of people on a very small road all at one time without resources. So we have 20 million people in the state of Florida, and I kind of laugh, we have two roads. So we're putting everybody on the road at the same time, uh, simultaneously while we receive most of our gasoline for our cars, our fuel, by boat. And if we have a hurricane, we're not getting any more gasoline by boat. It just con <laughs> compounds the problem. Uh, and again, it's a little bit scary and people make decisions based on fear. So one of our things this year for hurricane season moving forward, uh, between us and Sarasota and the state of Florida and almost every emergency management agency in the country, the best thing we can do is provide education to help people know what's going on. And it's very neat in Florida because we have such close relationships between counties. Uh, we have our regional calls, which is our Florida Division of Emergency Management region, which uh, Sarasota and Manatee County are in Region 6. And then we have our Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council region, which is different. And then Manatee County also participates in Region 4, which is like a greater Tampa Bay region, um, just because we share so much land um, adjacent to those counties. So we have messages that go back and forth by email. We have conference calls up to a dozen times a day, uh, at minimum probably four conference calls a day, with those counties, with the National Hurricane Center, and with the state of Florida, along with the National Weather Service office in Ruskin, uh, and the Weather Service office uh, down south, I think it's in Fort Myers, so that we can provide that um, same message to our residents. Now, there will be cases where Manatee County has a different risk uh, or threat than Sarasota County has, and one of those uh, examples is you see very far south on the Sarasota County side, 
the arrival of tropical storm force winds or the amount of storm surge might be a little different between the very southern parts of Sarasota and the very northern parts of Manatee. And that would just mean we, weren't, we won't always be able to implement the same timeline or the same message, uh, but to the extent possible, we coordinate that. And that just helps people understand being in a kind of a middle media market that what I'm telling one neighbor isn't, doesn't have to be different than what I'm telling another neighbor. Um, I live very close to University Parkway, and it's almost kind of funny. Well, it depends on what side of the road you're on, what the message is, and that's confusing to folks. So we use that coordination between us and Sarasota to make sure that people are not confused. And honestly, that same message uh, helps people act quicker. It also helps people have more faith in that message. So I just put some pictures of social media on here. This is from uh, Sarasota County and Manatee County. And then we also share messages from the state of Florida and FEMA to make sure that folks have, uh, have the right news, the same news, and at the right time to be able to do the right thing for their families. This is basically all I just said. I won't go too much into detail. But the evacuation piece is very large in Florida. We have 20 million people, and I laugh. We have two roads. Um, but the message for everyone in Florida is we evacuate out of the way of storm surge. So that's the height of water above the dirt. The National Hurricane Center issues those storm surge warnings and is able to provide an estimate or a forecast of where it is, when it might arrive, and how bad it might be. So those colored areas on the map, the red and yellow and purple, those are forecast areas. So it's not necessarily where it will have storm surge inundation, it's where it could have storm surge inundation. The track of the storm, the size of the storm, there are a lot of variables. And in order to make it as less confusing as possible, we just color coded into that, that height above the dirt. So the picture on the left is what we would see in a typical hurricane evacuation. Everybody wants to get on the road at the same time and go as far away as possible. Um, we kind of laugh way, way after the fact that sometimes when we evacuate in Florida, because storms uh, have a tendency to change directions and our forecasters are not exactly um, picking winning, winning lottery numbers anytime soon, uh, we end up sometimes evacuating back into harm's way. And we saw this during Hurricane Irma, uh, very early during the storm, and I believe it was actually Labor Day. We already had people arriving from the east coast of Florida all the way to Manatee County looking for places to stay. Uh, they would understand that, of course, that was a very big storm. And then post-Hurricane Harvey, those, those images that you see on TV of people being rescued on jet skis out of their homes, uh, that spurred people to really get on the road. And we'd try, try, try to get folks educated that you don't have to go all the way to Georgia in order to get out of harm's way. Um, though, uh, if you do need to do that, of course, leave as early as possible. Uh, and of course, um, just be very, very patient. The picture on the right is what a very large hurricane evacuation shelter might look like. Um, but because this is titled sheltering, uh, I was talking to some folks earlier, Sheltering is a very broad term. So it's not just hurricane evacuation sheltering that are in our public schools or the facility that you see on the right. Um, sheltering could also mean sheltering in place. That means that you're safe at home to stay there, or pet sheltering or special needs sheltering. So it's just that very short term, uh, very just storm driven, this is where you're going to be when the winds kick up. So this picture is what a typical shelter, perhaps in Manatee County or Sarasota, would look like. This is probably a gym or some kind of convention center. And you'll see there's just a hodgepodge of people. Um, our American Red Cross in Florida was very strong during the 2004 and 2005 season. And the residents that still live here that experienced that season had a much different flavor of uh, hurricane sheltering than we have in recent years. That's a completely voluntary organization, and as their donations and volunteer interest drop off, their level of service provides that they could provide also kind of falls off. So hurricane shelters in Florida and here locally, we do not really utilize the American Red Cross because that is not a sufficient level of service for our folks. Um, but that also means they don't get a cot and an American Red Cross blanket or a pillow when they get there. This is very bare bones and life safety only. Um, however, to note, 
I have this phrase like over and over again, if you are safe to stay home, if you live in a well-built house outside of the hurricane evacuation area, um, we want you to be able to know your home. So that means know when your home was built, know what hurricane evacuation level you live in, um, know if your home is built to code and can withstand those winds on your roof, uh, and just be very aware as a homeowner or a renter what your uh, home is willing to withstand. If you live on the island or a level A or a mobile home, of course, always evacuate. Um, don't be the person uh, that said, you know, I wish I would have left or I wish I could have gone somewhere. And those are the folks that we really want um, to evacuate inland to friends or family members' houses. If friends and family are not available, the public sheltering piece will come into play. And that is the picture on the right. So we've had a large discussion on sheltering in the state of Florida because things have changed dramatically with a new leadership at the Federal Emergency Management Agency with just a different economy than we had in 2004 and 2005. Uh, they are looking at doing things differently, which means we also have to look at doing things differently. So I don't have an update on the facility itself being our public schools or the public assistance uh, grant reimbursement process through FEMA, but I will say that everyone is truly interested and we were able to go through Hurricane Irma very successfully and success means to me that people were safe and that they had the minimum amount of resources they needed or information that they needed to take care of their friends and family. I don't have very many slides after that, obviously, but uh, I'm here to help answer any questions that you might have. Okay, thank you. I don't see any questions. Um, frankly, we've done so much on hurricanes. This has got to be my, uh, I'm in the Vanessa Baugh category of frustration on this topic. I mean, this has got to be my 99th meeting on this. Uh, but no offense, you seem like you're an expert in your field. Uh, you all, you all did engage, and you had kind of a unique process. I know we got a copy of your report that you engaged with um, the Everyone. former oh, yeah. former yeah. FEMA director, and you had many experts come, and you had like a non profit Did you think that was really a great exercise that you went through with everybody? Well, we, we were blessed enough to have a community foundation uh, pay for that consultant, and he is recognizably the best in the United States. He was our Sarasota guy. Mm -hmm. He got taken to Tallahassee. He's our state guy. Then he's our federal guy. Mm -hmm. So um, we wanted to make the highest and best use of his good information. So not only did he share it with us, but we had multiple joint meetings, some of which you folks attended also. So we tried to um, you know, share the wealth as much as we could. But we learned a lot. And it, uh, it probably has caused some future, and I know it has caused some future changes. Okay, he changed, follow. one of the things he changed that I recall is just open all your shelters at once. Don't open them incrementally, incrementa you know what I mean. <laughs> um, because it just upsets the public and confuses them. Just say they're all open and you can always close them, but did you wish to say something? Uh, yes, as someone who lived in the uh, EOC building with Sherilyn and, I, and her teams, uh, was really eye-opening to, to see. And we were very, very fortunate that we uh, got spared as much as we did. And uh, the most um, damage we had was the debris, the storm debris. And then we had to pay extra money or wait longer for the cleanup. So I, I talked with the county administrator and assured me that they're entering into the contracts for all these uh, vendors to make sure that they're they're on on deck waiting uh, if we need them god forbid we don't and um, you know just kudos to both counties for cleaning up so quickly and uh, you know just putting people at ease basically so both counties did really well uh, just have one last question and it could be because we brought it up before regarding are, are someone from our county in negotiation with um, Sarasota Hospital because uh, we had to evacuate so is someone are we d d discussing that with Sarasota Memorial 
Was it the Manatee Memorial Hospital uh, evacuation? Yes. You mean? We have. I we don't know off the top of my head, but I can find out for you. Okay, because yeah. we stayed. weren't able to utilize them. No? It's ACA. ACA. Mm -hmm. Okay, because so we had to go as far as Gainesville to bring our patients. Well, I really do think both counties handled it well, and I'm glad you brought up vendors because that was kind of the funny part. We contracted with people for debris pickup and food service. And the fact that there were so many hurricanes, not only here but nationwide, our, our vendors were taken by Houston. Mm -hmm. So they were already there and we couldn't use them. And, and then of course we all had to compete price-wise with Miami for debris pickup. So mm -hmm. welcome to capitalism at its finest. So those things just, but I think we lucked out and when you talk about debris pickup and people were complaining that they didn't think it, we did it quick enough and we're mostly tree branches and, but you compare that debris to what they were trying to pick up in Houston, whole houses, cars, buildings. So we, we lucked out all the way around. So I just trust patients um, before a storm, during a storm, after a storm. And you're very right about the Hurricane Harvey debris. It really puts it into perspective when you see the mountains of debris from right. their state. Yeah, my, my little pile of brushes don't, don't quite look so bad. But if people are alive to complain, then I'm at least halfway doing my job right. Exactly. Very good. Thank you. Um, we're now going to turn to an update on the radio system from Paul Alexander, Manatee. You wanna... Paul is the county's chief information officer and the director of IT. Welcome. Good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here this afternoon and make this update uh, on behalf of our joint uh, teams. Uh, sitting to my left is uh, Willie Miranda, who oversees our radio uh, division in Manatee County. And uh, Rich Collins and uh, Jerry Wheeler extend their apologies for not being able to be here. I know Rich was attending the memorial service uh, either this morning or this afternoon. Uh, and so I will be making that presentation on behalf of the team. This uh, first slide here, I had uh, intended to uh, just point out the partnership that exists between uh, Sarasota and Manatee County, but in light of the uh, discussion I was inspired with on agenda item number one, uh, I would like to say that uh, we did date, um, we were engaged, we married, and we have a prenup. <laughs> and uh, that prenup is in the form of an interlocal agreement. I like that. Uh, and uh, we have an occasional lover's spat, uh, but I think that uh, both of our counties, both of our teams, uh, would say that this has put us in a position of strength. Um, I'm going to share specifically what that means, but uh, we have business leverage that we otherwise would not have. There is no doubt that regionally we're going to improve public safety for first responders and for our citizens, and we are going to save uh, dollars in the process. What I would like to do is speak in terms of um, scope, uh, schedule, uh, and cost, and I'm going to do it predominantly from this one slide. And I promise I won't get too technical, but I'd like to put some of this into context because some of the, the detail here uh, really speaks to how it is we're going to improve public safety. The radio system is really broken into three separate areas. The first is this core equipment, uh, and the first bullet being the microwave. Microwave technology is a wireless technology that is installed on each of the towers throughout our counties. We have 18 towers in total across the region. And these microwave units allow interoperability of those towers and the radio system, even across re those regional boundaries. Uh, it creates operational redundancy, uh, and it allows essentially a technical mesh, if you will, that blankets both of the counties. Um, secondly, there is a radio system. Think of this as sort of the central nervous system. There is a core to the radio system that now exists in Sarasota's Emergency Operations Center and also in Manatee County's public safety uh, complex. And the rest of the central nervous system exists out at each of the tower sites. 
that microwave equipment and fiber optics allows all of that to communicate in a seamless and an interoperable way. Having the cores in both of those data centers allows what we call geo-redundancy. And in the event that we would have a problem in any one of the counties, the other county can fully support the load of the system. Also, we have telecommunicator dispatch console. These are the consoles that will be in the 911 center uh, and also in the sheriff's area that will allow uh, those telecommunicators to put wheels on the ground, whether fire, whether EMS, or whether law enforcement. All of that equipment that I just described was placed in a warehouse up in Gatineau in Canada. Uh, it was taken for a test drive in what we call a factory acceptance test. All of the uh, techies and stakeholders involved approved the operation of that. It was shipped, staged in a warehouse here in the Sarasota Bradenton area, and now substantively has been placed in shelters at each of the tower sites and in our data centers. Let's talk for a moment about the tower sites. Uh, a lot of civil engineering had to be done and design work uh, for in Manatee County, three new tower sites at Canaan Park, Hidden Harbor, and Cortez Booster Station. For Sarasota, there's one at Englewood, and then there is a leased tower at Hi-Hat that both of the counties will be sharing. That lease agreement has also been approved and put in place. That civil engineering is done, and on the critical path has been the permitting of those tower sites. Manatee County, I'm pleased to say that the permitting process is complete and we have broken ground simultaneously on all three of those new sites. Uh, I'm to understand that within the next week, it's imminent that the permitting for the Englewood Tower on the Sarasota side will also be done uh, and they will break ground. That is really good news for the, the, uh, the project. That construction and permitting will be done by Tower Systems and located on each one of the sites is a prefab shelter uh, installation that is being done uh, by Leesburg Concrete Company. Um, that is a hardened facility at each site that contains uninterruptible power systems, diesel generators, the electronics or that central nervous system. Uh, and it supports the operation of the towers on each of those sites for not only the microwave, the fiber, but also the RF side or the transmit and receive antennas that go to the first responders' portable radios and mobile radios. Uh, on the radio subscriber units, uh, two different paths here. Uh, Sarasota substantively had the radios that they needed. They made a few extra purchases along the way, but they were P25 compatible. Uh, and they, like Manatee County, are configuring those in what we call templates that will be used by law enforcement, fire, and EMS. Um, and in Manatee side, uh, we were due for a technology refresh. We now are in possession of all new radios for the Sheriff's Office and law enforcement and also for the BCC agencies. Those include portables that will be carried by first responders along with accessories and also will include uh, installations that will be done uh, in the vehicles themselves. So those are the major components. Since the last time that Rich Collins addressed this board, uh, there has been significant uh, forward progress on each of these. Um, when it comes to completed activities, I mentioned the factor acceptance testing, the licensing, the engineering and design, and now absolutely uh, in uh, uh, full-blown uh, construction at the tower sites to complete the rest of the installation. When we talk about challenges and risk mitigation, what we see here uh, is weather, weather and hurricanes. Uh, if we have uh, something like we did last year, and I hope we don't, um, then we will get derailed and we will get delayed, not only because of our inability to be able to work at the sites, but also uh, we'll need the people that will be involved in those events uh, to assist with the testing uh, and, and so forth before it's rolled out. For us, there is some technical vantage points that we have to make sure are, are operating and that we can sustain the system. But the acid test for us is going to be when law enforcement, fire, and EMS give us thumbs up and say, yep, it's working to the satisfaction and will support the daily business operations of the county. 
Uh, those are our primary challenges there. When it comes to project uh, budget, uh, I would say that just in general that we are about at the 50-50 point. Uh, half of the payments have been made, half of the payments are outstanding, and both counties are operating within their bookends. We are on uh, target when it comes to, uh, uh, to the budget, and currently right now we don't see any significant challenges with uh, the balance of the, of the project. I'd like to conclude with just a reminder of some of the, the, the benefits because this is really uh, the, the benefit of the partnership that we have between Sarasota and Manatee. There is no doubt that our citizens and our first responders are going to be uh, enabled by not only the functionality but just the coverage. We have a lot of dead zones within our uh, two county area. University Corridor is one, out west on the coast and out east in particular. And when we look at the coverage maps, particularly with the location of the new towers that are being built, there is no doubt that that coverage uh, will be far in excess of what it is today. That is really good for our citizens and our first responders. Uh, also, we're going with the grain. There is uh, a lot of wisdom around uh, uh, not cross-cut, cross-cutting the industry. P25 is a standard. It's a standard that's going to be here for a while, and it enables interoperability uh, in ways that we've not had, also opens up competition with other devices that are P25 compatible that we can benefit from lower cost or price points. And then lastly, um, and I always put improved public safety at the top, but yes, there is cost savings here. I mentioned those redundant core systems in our EOC and our PSC. If we had to buy that redundancy on our own, each county would have paid in excess of a million dollars more just for that core. We also have shared uh, towers, shared assets. I men mentioned hi-hat, that saved a million dollars right there. The aircraft tower, we're going to share one tower, that saved a half a million dollars. And shared maintenance and support as part of our agreement, we have a 12-year agreement pre-negotiated that has a technology refresh at the halfway point that has been pre-negotiated, we know what that price is, and we know that it is a significantly reduced cost from us going alone and on our own. We also are going to have a Motorola uh, resource on site to assist with that maintenance, and we're going to share that person between the two counties. So in total, there is combined buying power and influence, not only over the project as we move forward, uh, but I'll use the radios as an example. Uh, we got uh, pretty deep discounts on those uh, to the point we were about 50 to 60 cents on the dollar. And that uh, survives the go live date by two years in which any stakeholder using our system can buy those radios at that deep discounted price. That is something that uh, there is strength in numbers when it comes to buying power and influence. And I'll open up the floor for any questions that you might have. Any questions, Commissioner? Uh, no questions. Just uh, really want to thank you for, for doing all that. And number one, economies of scale, saving us time, saving us money. Home run. Thank you. You're okay, welcome. Commissioner Baugh. <coughs> yes, I, you know, Paul, thank you for the update. And I think it goes to show that Sarasota and Manatee County working together certainly can make a difference. Uh, and the word regionalism comes up because I know with these radios there's an opportunity for other counties to get on board as well. And we'll really notice that uh, in times of emergency with hurricanes and, and so forth. So um, good job. Good job. Glad to hear it. Thank you. Yes. Anybody else? Commissioner Whitmore. Real quick, Paul, um, the target date for both counties, since you're speaking for both, I don't know if you know Sarasota's, but kind of. Uh, assuming the weather behaves mm -hmm. uh, and we stay on, on track, we're looking at fourth quarter this year or first quarter next year. Um, that's Good. the time frame. And the total cost, if I remember, was $15 total million cost on our was side? $15 million for uh, Manatee County and just south of 19 for Sarasota County. Okay, that's a big project. That's Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else? Commissioner Mayo. Uh, Paul, thank you. Great job. We were involved on our end in the site selection. And I just have one real question. Would you like to now, as this comes to conclusion, take over the uh, regional bus situation for us? <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I said we were married. I didn't say it didn't come with some challenges. But uh, all, all kidding aside, uh, I, I neither uh, uh, take for, for granted uh, and, and, and I do value that partnership. Uh, it is really worth the price of admission. Well, thank you very much. It's nice to know we were able to agree on something and it worked out. Yay. <laughs> thank you. Okay, next we're going to hear about Regional Traffic Management Center. Saji, take it away. Good afternoon. My name is Saji Kamia. I'm with Manti County Public Works. I'm the Deputy Director of Traffic Management. And with me is Fabio Capillo. He's our RTMC Manager for our Regional Center. Uh, real, real briefly, want to kind of start off by... Um, I, I'm an engineer, so I'm not maybe very eloquent sometimes, and so I'm going to steal the marriage um, uh, analogy that's been used. Um, we, we not only are married, we restate our vows. So we've got two uh, agreements that we've done, and um, that's it, we kind of started courting, if you will, maybe about 18 years ago. So the conversation started in early 2000 about um, be between the region at the MPO level and at FDOT level about um, you know how can we make regional traffic better? How can we um, make sure that we coordinate between the region, between the jurisdictions, and how can we make sure that we improve, I'll call it incident management, um, but that's basically crashes or anything that would stop um, traffic from flowing. And so that kind of coalesced in a 2005 agreement that spelled out that we will have a um, regional staff team that would manage operations and um, help direct the, the TMC. Um, it also clarified that the RTMC facility would be in Manatee County and um, that their proportionate share costs would be based off of census data. And uh, this exhibit, the slide, just kind of shows the different partnerships that were part of that, Manatee and Sarasota County, City of Sarasota, City of Bradenton, and formed the Intelligent Transportation System Management Team, or basically a committee, the TMC committee, um, to help guide staff. And at, that was, was kind of the foremost the basis for, you know, let's get together, let's get married. But the specifics of, of how wasn't really spelled out that in agreement. So over the course of the next uh, nine years, eight, nine years, we developed some operational agreements that specifically spelled out, well, what would be done and, and who would do that. And those are some operational agreements that um, between Sarasota County and Mantee County uh, were signed in 2013. Um, but that spelled out that there would be an RTMC manager, Fabio, and staff um, that would work with um, basically in Mantee County staffing to support HR, um, financial services, that kind of thing. But the functions would be um, dictated, directed um, by the TMC committee, the team. Um, the facility and the uh, equipment um, would also be part of that that would be shared specifically in addition to staff shared costs for that. Um, but not the infrastructure, not the um, capital projects that connect to the TMC. That, that, that's each jurisdiction, each agency is responsible for that piece. And then, you know, the overall goal being traffic management services. And each county, though, would maintain their authority specifically for, like, signal timing changes. And uh, if a signal timing change was needed, uh, basically the TMC would monitor, let each of the jurisdictions know, and then any timing changes that need to be made would be made at the jurisdiction level. In 2017, basically last year, that changed in that FDOT provided some additional funding to cover some of those timing changes. So the function today really is the TMC can make some timing changes when needed if there's an incident or a crash, um, still directed by the jurisdictions, but there are TMC staff, there's engineers and engineering staff that are capable to make those changes and they will do that for incidents or crashes that come up. Um, not necessarily for the recurring day-to-day, uh, -day, you know, AM, PM, peak traffic. Um, the funding is not there to support that. So basically I say all that to say that we have basically come of age. We have a, um, a system that every major metropolitan area has and uh, it enables us to um, do the things that we do. And uh, to kind of think about where we've come from, this next slide, uh, it shows uh, 
some of our equipment from circa 1991. Um, those of you who are c computer folks know, you know that's like the old 286 kind of style of equipment. Um, that's what we came from that we started building in the region in 2009. So I just wanted to give a little bit of history of that, and that segues into what our center looks like today, and I'll let Fabio cover specifically what our TMC does for the region. Thank you very much. Thank you all for inviting us today and uh, give us opportunity to provide you an update. As you can see in this slide, this is how the RTMC looks today. Uh, that's probably a few weeks ago. Um, you see there is uh, several rows of um, desks and uh, I will explain to you why and who is partners in there. So the mission statement is the Sarasota Manatee Traffic M Management Center will provide an enabling environment for all stakeholders to collaborate and to share information resulting in a combined systematic approach to traffic operations and traffic incident response. This mission statement was um, put together by the ITSMT, the Intelligent Transportation System Management Team, uh, which is uh, uh, formed by uh, one representative of each partner of the RTMC, uh, which oversee the function operation of the, um, the our center. ITS, Intelligent Transportation System. Uh, this is include a wide range of uh, diverse technologies and uh, with the same goal to, to improve uh, travel, travel, travel safety, travel safety, travel mobility, and to improve the efficiency of the surface transportation system. Uh, there are th different technologies that came in, in aid, uh, like Direct Alexander, I'm not gonna go too much in detail in uh, uh, lingo of uh, technologies, but uh, the most common you will see, you will see CCTV located at some intersection. Uh, there are some data collection devices which uh, helps in, uh, to monitor the roadway, and also there are some travel information devices um, installed that are able to provide critical information to the, our travel public. Uh, on the top left corner, there's a control cabin in the silver box that you see at every intersection. Uh, thanks to connectivity, thanks to a communication network, now we are able to um, communicate and reach out this intersection uh, remotely from our desk. The capabilities of the RTFC. Uh, absolutely regional surface street traffic management. Uh, there is critical malfunction detection, notification, and monitoring of uh, those devices. There is evacuation routes timing that we might go in details like, for example, when uh, example Hurricane Irma. We have real-time incident management. Uh, thank, this thanks to the, uh, the funding agreement, that we, partial funding agreement that we have with FTOT. And uh, we also take care of performance measure reporting. How those capabilities, you know, what are the, the benefits of those capabilities? Uh, the goal is to reduce congestion uh, across multiple jurisdictions. We have several corridors that are multi jurisdictions. So, University Parkway is one of the east and west corridors, but we have, you know, north and south corridors as well that, that are worth to mention US 31, US 41, for example. Um, we, um, the critical of function attention and mo mo notification and monitoring. Uh, improve the maintenance and the repair response times. So we have also the benefit of um, uh, for each maintaining agency to improve uh, the, the, the maintenance efficiency. Uh, for the evacuation, uh, uh, the evacuation route timing, uh, we can we improve the efforts for recovery, uh, both inbound, outbound when people evacuate, and then inbound when people want to come back home after all is gone and done. Uh, we also have the the ability to improve. Uh, Special planned event. So we have planned event which are emergency, like the hurricanes, and we have special planned event where everybody want to go have fun, such as the war rowing event and the, or the, the regatta. Um, we we were activated and we will we were managing uh, the surface the surface transportation system, and uh, also all these devices they are used by engineers and uh, each stakeholder for data collection. Uh, those data are extremely important for the engineer and stakeholders to make decisions. Uh, we, do, we do a lot of things. So again, under the, so the supervision of TSMT, I, I manage the, 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 the RTMC and my guys, as currently funded, we are, we are operating Monday to Friday, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. So we cover both a.m. and p.m. peak, uh, Monday to Friday. And that we are over two shifts because there are more than eight hours to work. My guys monitor the street surface system through the CCTV and other software. Here I just put some of the software that we use. 
We use a central software that we can connect to the device and see the health of the devices. Uh, we have something like the Bluetooth, we, which use the Bluetooth technology, uh, able to provide us with travel time information. Uh, so for example, if a travel time goes below a specific threshold, uh, we are able to receive an alarm and then investigate. And then we do network communication uh, monitoring, so we'll see if the health of the devices, the system. If anything go down, this is go back to public safety. For example, the critical function will be a signal that goes dark. Uh, we want to know right away. We want to know as soon as possible. If we want to uh, be able to, dis, you know, inform the maintaining agency as soon as possible, uh, because everybody knows that a signal dark supposedly need to be treated like a four-way stop sign. Uh, many people in the rush, they, it might not be simple for a multi-link, you know, roadway uh, to be treated as a four-way stop sign. Uh, so we inform the maintaining agency and they dispatch the uh, operation folks uh, to go and take care of that. Uh, and also there are, we take care of the de detection reports, the, the part of the maintenance uh, that everybody care, a uh, signal that works is a signal that have detection. Uh, sometimes we, you know, if detection doesn't work, uh, the signal is still safe, uh, just inefficient, so we want to make sure we provide those reports uh, to the responsible parties. Uh, I have uh, provided to you um, a copy of the annual report is for your, um, for your use. We have, uh, try to quantify. So since we have the partial funding of the FDOT, we were able to add traffic engineering staff. So staff that were able to actually act on incidents, uh, which um, we have decided to quantify and provide you with information. Uh, just for example, those data, even if it's an annual report, we are reporting beginning uh, the March of 2017. That's where the folks actually came on board. And uh, if you see, we have managed more, more than uh, 1,600 uh, uh, incidents, uh, more than, more than uh, 280 were uh, managed by, uh, by the folks at RTMC. And if there's the number of vehicles, the throughput, so the number of vehicles of that were um, managed during those incidents, there is a f almost 40,000 hours of delay saved during the year. And uh, quantifying to dollar, because everybody knows that time is money and uh, people have things to do, uh, almost two million in a quarter. Uh, all this, again, is uh, thanks to, to, the, to the different, um, as we found now, thanks to the folks that are part of the, the, the TMC. Uh, just like Saji, I want to re remind that each jurisdiction, we still seek authorization. So, you know, we don't do things without it, no, each jurisdiction, no. Uh, we, we seek authorization first, authorization to um, make timing changes, and we and my staff follow a procedure in the operations manual, so there is a, a flow chart of how to proceed and what to do. Future needs. If only I had a crystal ball. A lot of things happening. Technology is changing rapidly. This is the truth. Technology comes in aid of lots of programs, lots of areas. And transportation is one of them. Uh, we all know that uh, millennials are the great, you know, biggest generation that you know, United States, um, you know, uh, history, and they are very technology uh, inclined. They, they had, they, they, they are moving uh, the way we do business. And uh, there are some things that we uh, we see uh, coming. Everybody knows autonomous vehicle, connected vehicle, uh, which are still in, you know, in a stage. Uh, not ready to be deployed everywhere. There are challenges, as, as, as you know, but particularly through the TMC, uh, we have to um, make sure we take care of the existing infrastructure. So things that were done by each jurisdiction was put into place. Uh, this infrastructure goes out of life. Uh, some product go out of you know, uh, support. So we have to make sure we are able to replace the aging infrastructure. And also we have to be able to expand our coverage. Uh, we are very glad to see that uh, we have the best beaches in the United States of America. Uh, people love to come here. We have our neighbors and our tourists that we want to take care and uh, support. And uh, thanks to all this development, it comes to the, the need to expand and be able to reach out to, to, to other areas that you know, was not possible at the beginning. Uh, and also there is the new technology. So again, uh, we uh, connect the vehicle, is uh, one of the, 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 the technology there. So the vehicle connected to another vehicle, 
something that, for example, vehicle crash avoidance uh, or your lane departure feature, your you know, newest model cars, and you have other type of technology connected to the infrastructure. So you're able to maybe, for example, to receive messages on the signal timing in phases, so you know when a signal is about to turn red. Um, so you can uh, adjust your speed and hopefully save uh, fuel. And, and also there is other features, so it's connected to everything else. So there is other things like pedestrian and, uh, and the Internet of Things. Uh, autonomous vehicles, same thing. So, you know, robotics, uh, artificial intelligence there, everybody talk. You, you saw the video of the first citizen, ro robot citizen of uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, technology is going there. We have to be ready to accommodate. So we have the system in place. Is like your tablet, is like your smartphone. So we have to be able to be ready, and, and is you know, it need to be updated, expanded. So it's like having new apps. Uh, things out there are available. They're gonna get available soon. Uh, we have to be um, able to acquire them and integrate with you know with the center. Um, again, this TMC is not a new concept. Every metropolitan area, uh, this is a tool uh, to reduce congestion. Uh, it's hard to see what can we do if we don't do anything, how bad could it get? Um, so even if most of the time a re you know, re reduced delay is not obvious to many, um, the benefit is there and we, we were able to quantify. Uh, what, we, what we didn't talk about, so those are the benefits of transportation. There are some other things that you know, we can consider when we improve transportation, that is to uh, roadway network to in, improve and expand the roadway network. Uh, so building more lanes, different roads, and you know, uh, they, they, you know, add capacity because we still deal with physics. Uh, if if we have a road that was built 25 years and we have to manage today, and we have much more vehicles, it's a capacity issue. Law of physics, you know, physics still apply. Um, we can only push as many cars as you know the roadway allows. So f we, have a, we have a question for you, Commissioner Moran. Yeah, thank you both for being here and I appreciate the presentation. I want to settle in here a little bit because this is a super important topic to me and um, more than just me, it's my constituents by far, this is the biggest complaint I get is traffic in this town and I'm sure it's others. It's not even close, um, number two. And what's frustrating to me is um, I've been in this position I guess now 16, 17 months or so. When I first got on here, I came over for a tour of the facility. And granted, um, maybe I just didn't get it. Uh, maybe it wasn't a comprehensive enough tour for me. Uh, maybe I need to do it again. But I got to tell you, after leaving there, I felt completely empty, and I just didn't get it. Um, what's troubling to me, and, th and this is a quality of life issue for people here. I have literally had employees quit over this traffic issue. And what I was troubled by is I went there, and it's just a fascinating facility. It's my understanding it was built even before iPhones and smartphones. It's been, like you mentioned, I believe 1991. And what's troubling to me is I, the whole time I was there, I was asking, so what do you guys do here? And my first is all these um, fascinating tall monitors of like, so like when you guys have an accident, you'll call the police and let them know, and the conversation was, well, no, really, people are on scene now with iPhones. They call the police. Oh, okay. Well, then if there's an accident at the scene that you'll reroute traffic. Um, no, we really don't do that. That's all kind of hard programmed, which I was glad to hear that now apparently just funding to maybe deal with that now. Um, I just over and over was asking, what are we doing here? And we have now five, speaking of marriages, we have five people, Manatee County, Sarasota County, City of Bradenton, um, City of Sarasota, and FDOT. And I'm sure five of us, there's a marriage joke in there somewhere, but I'm not touching it. And, and it's my understanding we have, um, maybe the county administrator could help me here, it's, it's in excess $300,000, $400,000. There's significant funding that's going into this. And as us all up here representing the taxpayer is we need to get a return on our investment on this. There needs to be a leadership. And if it's my understanding that this center is going to be the leadership of this traffic discussion, and I get it, it's complicated. You're dealing with state roads and county roads and city roads. Um, at the end of the day, I need to feel comfortable well, if we're taking taxpayer dollars and putting into this, what's the return on investment? And, and what, 
what's even more troubling to me is that I can already feel the ask for more money because the technology's coming, right? So we have all these smartphones all over the place now where you can almost, uh, I've, I've read up on this to some degrees, it's not even cameras so much anymore as people can tell the movement of traffic by literally the smartphones and the new vehicles that are coming out is what is the vision here and what is the purpose and specifically are you guys going to take the leadership role on a traffic issue, issue in our region? Madam Chair, for me, uh, Commissioner Moran, maybe when you came and visit was at the, the wrong time. Again, there was a whole way we did business and everything was through agreement and funding. So we, just like every other program area, we we're funded, we have some capabilities based on funding. Uh, things have changed maybe after, you, you know, a few months after, uh, that it, which is a great goal. You have seen we have quantified. Uh, about the budget, uh, roughly, we have an estimate uh, that we provide uh, to the stakeholders, and roughly what the estimate for Sarasota County was about shy of the 300. Uh, the effective, is, you know, the, the, the true expense was roughly 180. Uh, return investment was 2 million a quarter in just from March to December. So we have touched and benefited the, the, the travel public for incident management. So again, we, the, the current operation of TMC is to manage incidents. So not the regular timing, not the regular AM and PM peak, which is responsibility of each jurisdiction. So if it's a state road, we'll be going back to FDOT. If it's a state county road, it is the county responsibility. If it's a city, it's a city. Uh, we'll take care of the extra. Uh, the morning AM, PM peak is a um, problem everywhere in the world. It is everywhere. Um, there are things that can be done. Continuous, you know, funding the retiming effort for each agency. I'm sure, you know, Sarasara County just going now through a retiming uh, project in Sarasara County, uh, Marty County, similar did a few years ago, is something to revisit. Uh, we have an increased number of population coming here. Uh, so maybe continuously, you know, uh, the efforts of retiming. Technology is there, so yes, we have to be ready to to be able to fund. So we don't know yet what this technology will say. You know, the dedicated short range communication, all those devices connected. You know, to the cars now. Toyota has a, a Land Rover. Do another agreement with somebody else in Rix. Uh, all this data, yes, will be able to come back to the to the TMC, and I envision an algorithm to be able to manage this the demand. Um, so. I have to clarify the difference. So the RTMC is not as currently funded, as currently operation. We are not responsible for the, the AM peak hour, everybody going to work, drop off the kids, and, and do that. That is not what we do. Madam Chair, if I could just for the up. agreement, of just, course. Just, I'm looking at your materials, so does someone understand what's before us? So you're saying the efforts that are happening at the RTMC have saved the residents of this community almost 40,000 hours in their travel time and then you, you're saying that roughly the average person, if we threw a dart and hit the person, that that savings was $17.67 an hour. Those numbers, correct. So those numbers are not my numbers. Uh, those are standard uh, formulas that are used. So there's the Texas T uh, Transportation Institute that every year create a, a, a table of uh, dollar amount per area in every you know, United States, every town and region of the United States. So yes, sir, those information are correct. Those are estimate. Um, consequence of managing an incident, so reduce the delay. Uh, and this delay might be a five minutes reduction, but for three hours, for example, we had a, a full closure of Interstate 75 on 420, so just last week. Um, and it was between Mount Market 195 and 205, so everybody get off of Clark Road or somebody got off of Fruitville, and uh, they start taking on array US 41 as alternate route. Now those vehicles already carry 40 some thousand vehicles, 70 thousand, depending on the section of roadway. Uh, and you have added more cars. So an interstate uh, carries the higher volume. There, there is no many conflict. There is no traffic control devices, so it's free flow. Uh, you have had all these cars on a roadway that is not designed to perform that. Uh, this closure, I think roughly uh, around noon was all lanes of uh, I-75 was open, but that don't means that the congestion was done. So not because an incident clear or the roadway open, that means the congestion or loss that did disappear. So the folks have managed the congestion on US-41 uh, until probably one o'clock. And uh, they have estimated, calculated, now there are, there are some devices that are able to collect data precisely throughput and uh, you know, travel time. Um, 
roughly just those six hours I have more than $65,000 saved to two hour travel probably. Well, can, can we go into that? That's a specific example. I literally was on I-75 when that happened, came down onto Clark Road, and we sat, which took forever, of course, mm -hmm. and as we waited while the other lights didn't change when we were literally probably all tempted to just run it, it's, are you suggesting to me that you guys were sitting in your control center and you were controlling that light from there? We're not Clark Road and I-75. I think it was nine intersections that we measure along US-41. Now some things, have, they have to be connected. So, you know, not because there is a signal there that means there is connectivity. Uh, uh, we did not, um, let me think. I, I don't remember right now the map, how many signals are connected. Uh, but yes, we have managed about nine intersections. Correct, sir. Thank you. Okay. Any further questions, uh, Commissioner well, Whitmore, and then Kara Zulo? I was actually around on the MPO when this idea came up, and originally we voted against it. Came back a few years later, and it um, reappeared. What we have today, you know, just a little bit of that we can ha save our citizens in Sarasota and Manatee County. With all the traffic we have, we have to have something to manage it. Now, at one point I asked, is Sarasota County manned in, we, in the building? Don't they just pay us and we manage it? We man it, and also FDOT's in there too, correct? Because I remember I was actually there when, we, when Sarasota County was gonna be in that room also. And then they opted not to and they paid to have Manatee County do it. So there's still, you know, you, you do pay the money. You could still have staff in there uh, in the future or not. That's how it originally was attended because it was supposed to be a regional with FDOT. We were all in the same room. Your guys know your roads better than we do. So, and those lights there, the nine lights you were talking about, I think what the commissioners here would like to know in Sarasota and all of us in Manatee, what lights are you looking at in Sarasota County that you're able to visualize and control? and what ones are you in Manatee? So maybe if you could get both counties that information, that would be great. Roughly, there are, if you look at, the, um, also provided to you, there is a quarterly dashboard that we provide as a deliverable to the agreement with FDOT. Uh, roughly, there are about 400 in, uh, let me get the numbers, please. Four hundred sixty-seven signals, correct, and we have two hundred seventeen CCTV. Now, that don't means that every every signal out there is communicating. There is an infrastructure to be built, a communication infrastructure. Also, another thing to to be you know to note is the traffic engineer that is sitting down at TMC in order to make a timing changes, they have to have visual confirmation of the condition. So a CCTV need to be present because how would he know if it's the timing changes made are sufficient if condition change. So as you can see just from the numbers, uh, not all signals have CCTV. So there is always room for, you know, for improvement. Uh, there might be incidents that we don't have visual. We, were not, we are not able to make any change because we will not know if it is a good change or inefficient change. Um, okay. Uh, but, um, I, I hope staff are, is hearing us because I'm hearing a little dissatisfaction from two counties on service in this area and maybe we need each of our staffs to give us a report on maybe changes that need to be made or benchmarks that we need to reach that will kind of give us some a comfort level that we're getting the best service that we can possibly get is that correct mr. Moran okay uh, madam chair mr. yes can you who am I hearing? Okay, first we're going to do Paul and then Vanessa. Yeah. Well, Fabio, I'll say that, you know, in my book you come with immediate credibility because there's basically no chance you're going to mispronounce my name, which I feel really good about. Um, can you tell me, so I don't, I don't in, the, in the presentation there's a couple of items in there regarding um, the monitoring. So I don't know if you said it before, but the technology that's the uh, artificial in, in intelligence that you hear about all over the place, none of that technology is being utilized currently here, is it? Not, not the AI, okay. sir. Not, not the AI. And, and um, because that, that discussion came, if uh, those of you from uh, the MPO will recall, we discussed that uh, yesterday. Um, is that something that we're going to be looking at throughout the state, or is there, you're, you're, 
<laughs> you look pretty skeptical about it. Um, sure. Is there, is there, what, what, what should we know about that, if anything? You're recognized to answer. Yeah. Commissioner, um, just the, the short answer is uh, there's lots of technology out there, uh, but there are industry standards that not only need to follow FDOT rules for um, they have an approved products list per state statute need to be approved before we can put them in the street. But then there's also even those, uh, you know, my, my personal opinion, everybody's got a different one, but my personal opinion is, you know, being on the cutting edge is often the bleeding edge. And so sometimes it's worth mm -hmm. making sure you test it, make sure it does what you want it to do. And so while there's a lot of things that are out there for consumer use are not necessarily approved, you know, on a, on a, from a state so statute perspective. So the perspective. jury's still out on a couple of these technologies and yes, a little sir. more time to analyze the efficacy and or the risks. So yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Ba. Um, Saji, can you guys, on the back of this pamphlet, where it talks about the history, <clears throat> you're talking about 465 traffic signals um, and 208 closed circuit television cameras. And here's my question with that. I, I think, um, you know, I mean, having lived in Sarasota for 10 years and in Manatee County about the same amount of time, I mean, I know, for instance, like Clark Road, very busy road, and it's gotten, it's gotten even busier, I think, in the last two or three years. So I guess my question is, <clears throat> do we know, I'm, I mean, I know you guys know, but I don't think the commissioners here know, I know I don't, the, the traffic signals and, and, the, and the closed circuit television cameras, can we get a list as to where those are? Absolutely. Because sometimes I think maybe, it, maybe you guys do this, I don't know, but you know, maybe we need to look at it from time to time to make sure that the traffic patterns haven't changed, or if they have, that we have the cameras where we need them. Sure. A absolutely. We, we do have a list, and maybe that's our fault for not showing a good map of that. But uh, it is posted all over the TMC. You know, the folks regularly look at that. Uh, when they need to do their signal timing changes, they'll check to see, you know, which one's connected where and which one they can use. And that's part of the, the bullet point a little bit about expansion of coverage that as traffic changes and as we grow and as we expand, we need to make sure that the coverage that we can see and enact keeps up with that. Okay. Thanks a lot. Anybody else? Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Commissioner Banak. I just think it's important what um, was stated in the beginning, that this is not, you know, you're not there constantly looking at every intersection and patrolling lights, making changes based on traffic. It's more of a history-related um, type situation. And I know I've yes, had times where I've called you in, oh, sorry, called you in frustration on some of the, you know, I traveled um, US 301 on a regular right. basis, talk about a regional road between Sarasota and Manatee County. Um, and that road is packed at peak hour, just packed all the way. I've seen it packed from university all the way up to, um, you know, up to Manatee Avenue. I mean, I've seen it backed up, and that's, that really is a regional road that needs more capacity. But I, 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 I can't call you and say, look, I'm, I've been sitting here three times through this light. There's something wrong with it. And you say, well, you need to tell FDOT that because they're controlling the signal timing. Or... You know, it's the uh, project at 53rd and uh, US 301, start with 70 and US 301. That's, that signal timing has not been changed. So mm -hmm. it's not like I can call up and get them to push a button in the, um, on the ATMS system and, and fix it. So I think we just need to be cognizant of that. And, you know, if we could get to that, I'd love to know what it would cost. So. If I could take one briefly. more minute, thank you. Well, if I could take one more minute on that, that's what I thought I was walking into of this fascinating facility with tons of cameras, <laughs> where it's almost borderline a video game, where they could watch traffic flows and if it's coming over the bridge from St. Armand Circle and change all the lights to push a certain way or whatever. I was I was I was incredibly optimistic. I just want to clear that is not what's going on at all at that facility. Not even close. Again, I'm open to conversation on the matter. So I, as close as we can get that, and there are other municipalities in this country that are doing so in that description. But again, keeping ahead of the technology it is, just can't be ignored, and it's expensive, I get it. I think one of the downsides of, t of uh, television, frankly, and it's true in the medical field, and it's true in this, for instance, and it's true in um, police protection, we think everything's going to happen in a, we think it's all cutting edge and it all happens in a half an hour, and then we're disappointed. 
because it costs money and we have federal requirements that private business doesn't have and government moves it moves but it moves slowly so which never makes anybody happy so I think what we're looking for is a little reassurance that given those um, that criteria that we're doing the best we can and we're looking for areas of improvement and if it costs money for new technology for I mean I'd love to have that if there's a crash that the lights immediately change so people can be rerouted. I have personally, and seen others do it, have sat for hours. I mean, I used to have a five hour commute each way. <laughs> At one point, I drove the wrong way down the ramp to I-75 because I had already sat there for two hours. And nobody came to help anything, and, pretty, and I wasn't the only one. I was probably the leader of the 10 car pack going the wrong way. <laughs> on the entrance ramp. But if people don't direct you, you know, we you've heard what the goal is and let us know what we have to do to get there. Chair. Just quickly, I've been driving these roads for a well, long time as a passenger with my parents and, and myself. Old 301 mm -hmm. was terrible between Sarasota and we're talking the 60s. And we built new 301 and by golly, new 301 worked great. And then we built the interstate. We used to, I don't know how many of y'all realize, I-75 was not always there. And uh, the traffic always going over 41, 301 from Palmetto to Sarasota. We fix it, and then we're obsolete within six months. No, no offense, it's been going on that way in Florida forever. So. Right. This is a continual problem. Um, I don't know that it can be fixed. We have something nobody else has. It's called sunshine, and everyone wants to live here. So we all have new, we all have new friends. But in the 50 years, there's really only been two roads that have improved it, I-75 and New 301, or whatever y'all call it, that's what I call it. And think about how many more people are here since 67. So a lot, a lot a lot more cars and there's only two more north and south and I can't even think of any really east to west connector roads to be downright honest with you I'm sure y'all have a few and we have a few so you know y'all chose to come here you know we're neighbors on the road right. show your ho your southern hospitality <laughs> or your acquired southern hospitality <laughs> I like to point out to the general public that it's not just our county there are 20 million people in the state, and last year we had 125 million tourists, which is not a made-up number. So it's no surprise that we were all at the same stoplight at the same time. And there is no or place... Or do what I do. I'm usually at work by 6.30. I find that nobody is on the roads between what, 11 uh, o'clock no at night and 6 in the morning. It's a great time to drive. Well, you, you hear the goal, so I, I'm i going to say that um, we have one card for public input that I'd like to get to, and then we'll then we'll wrap up our, because there's nothing less left on the list. But thank you. Uh, we have a, a card from Cynthia Finn. If you haven't left, we'd be happy to have you come up here and speak for three minutes on any topic of your choice. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, first, I'd like to say I am a Manatee County homeowner since 1983. Having sat here, and I'll thank uh, the commissioner from my district for closing the first hour discussion. Item D, what you just discussed, that's the most important thing on this agenda. Right. So you spend an hour talking about riders when actually the people who ride your buses, go talk to them, what do they need? So I'm going to say 1984, my best friend from Sarasota County crossed to the old Ramada Inn in Manatee County, and there was no APB um, coordination, and she killed herself. So all of this is really important. And I'm going to say that in this political climate of good old boy, good old gal stuff, the references to one night stands and marriage, sorry, I'm offended. I am really offended. So Irma, 
I live in 34209, actually in a blue collar street a block from the golf course. I had no power for nine days. I think it was a week ago Thursday that Verizon shut down. So who's going to tell me to evacuate or not? This is the stuff that's important to we the people. Some of my friends in mobile home parks who just got their roofs back on didn't think Irma was such a small thing. Forgive me, but this is important. And I'll ask you guys if you knew things like the Skyway um, was free for a month and then I went back on the Skyway and I'm on the Skyway almost every day and suddenly it's not $1.25, it's $1.50. Do you guys have input into that? Okay, this traffic stuff is not a joke. I evacuated Longboat Key in 1985, Labor Day weekend, and someone had a heart attack in front of me. This is not a joke. We need you guys to do your job. It's the start of the hurricane season. We're not laughing. I don't care who's married. I care how my county is gonna let me know what to do in an emergency. That's what I care about. And if you think I'm, I'm over the top and angry, I am. I just sat here since 1.30. And the most important discussion was the one at the end. And I thank those gentlemen for being here. That's the future. And so please, you guys talk about, tell me, what are you gonna do when Verizon's out and I don't have power? And I'm a stage four cancer patient. What are you gonna do for me? Thank you. Okay. Um, would you care to make some comments? We have run out of business. Appreciate your hospitality. Thank you. Administrators, do you have any final words? Thanks, Lynn. Okay, well, thank you for coming to Sarasota. We appreciated the conversation. Apparently, we were overly jovial. We'll try not to do that next time. And with that, meeting adjourned. <laughs>